This is a project I have been working in the past couple of weeks. It's a 3D planet generation mechanism built in the Godot engine. How I did this in the Godot engine is the main topic of this video, so let's start. Also a cool feature of the implementation is the ability of changing the planet properties in the Godot engine. Whenever I change the properties, a new planet is generated. The overall steps we need for the planet generation are quite simple. First, we need to generate a sphere. Then we will deform each vertex of the sphere with some noise. Last, we will need a shader to add some color for the planet. I also added an optional step to generate the planets in the engine. First, we need to generate a sphere. Godot has a mechanism for this. You can just use the sphere mesh. For me, I need more control on the sphere. So if you use the Godot sphere, you can skip the next part. One method I found to generate a sphere is to start with an icosahedron. An icosahedron is an object with each side being a triangle. From this odd object I can build a sphere. The following code I have found builds an icosahedron in code. This generates one with a given radius. Now after creating this odd object, let's generate a sphere from this. The idea is to generate more triangles than the one in the icosahedron. With more triangles, the more the mesh will look like a sphere. We will subdivide each triangle into smaller ones. We move the vertices that their length is equal to the radius. There is also a parameter subdivision. This says how often you want to subdivide a single triangle. The more we subdivide, the more vertices we have, the more this shape looks like a sphere. There are implemented algorithms for this. I found one in a GitHub repository. The code is written in GDScript. Link is in the video description. This is how I generate a sphere for my project. Now that we have a sphere, some deformation would be nice. Some mountains, some land and some oceans would be nice. This vertex deformation can also be done in a shader. In a shader I can change the position of a vertex, but I didn't want to do this in my project. As always, when someone needs something random to be generated but in a nice pattern, one needs to use a noise. Not your classical noise, that doesn't look good. Noise like this looks good. It's random and looking nice. I use the open simplex noise from Godot for my deformation. You can think of that darker pixels mean higher points. This example can help. From this strip, the following vertices can be deformed. So we just take the vertex and put them into the noise. This will give us a number between minus 1 and 1. I also added some more functionality to this result like changing the range from minus 1 to 1 to a range from 0 to 1. I added a parameter amplitude to get higher vertices. I also added a parameter frequency to get more frequent deformation. And also I added multiple layers of noise to get even better results. All this combines creates my deformation I use for the planet. So if you want to have more information, a good tutorial series is linked in the video description. So oh, after applying deformation on our planet, some colors would be nice. One way to do this and a good way to do this is a shader. I start with the definition of the colors. I added a uniform vector 4 with the hint color. This exports a vector 4 with the hint that says that this one is a color. I added the color of the water, the grass, the mountain and the snow. The next value are uniform floats with a hint range. This is a float which can be edited in the shader parameters. I created three floats like this. The code will be running in the fragment shader. This means that this function will be called on every pixel. So we will assign each pixel on the planet a color based on the height of the pixel. This example shows how the painting dependent on the height will be done. So we get the height of the point. First we need a painter function which paints based on the height then we need a function which calculates the height. This function calculates the color and this function calculates the height. By this I can create different colored planets and paint at different heights. Next I wanted to create this planet in the editor. This will save a lot of time. To run code in the Godot editor we need to define our code as a tool. My code is in C Sharp but this will also work in GDScript. I added a flag to the variables I want to export, so I can see the variables in the editor and I can edit them. Also I added a setter and getter function. 
So every time when I set the value to a value, uh, the function which builds my planet will be called. So every time I change a property, the planet will be generated. Something interesting I found is when I added the script to the mesh instance, I couldn't move the float bar. I could only move them by one step and then I need to click again. My guess is that the Godot engine updates the whole node. So when I move the float value, the range stops moving. I solved this issue by attaching the generation script to another node. Problem solved. I didn't go into much detail. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Some of you followed me because of my awesome work and devlogs I have been posting on this channel. Well, the last one is a bit back. My plan was to build an awesome 2D top-down game. It should be an action adventure with a cool story. I had the overall story in my head. The more I created for the game, the more another idea came to into my head. 3D. Now how could this look in 3D? 3D would be way cooler. Every time I worked on the game I had the idea to do something in 3D. My choice was either to ignore my inner voice and move on or start to do something in 3D. Well this video shows what I chose. What does this mean for my 2D game? Well yeah, it's abandoned. Again an indie game that doesn't will be released. Does this mean that after some time I will jump from this 3D game to another? I mean, I did abandon the game project. Why not this 3D game again? <sighs> Good question, to be honest. I don't know. I have a clear goal in my head and clear features to implement. But what is this project? The goal of this project is to build a 3D roguelike real-time strategy game. The twist is that the map is a solar system with different planets. The goal is to destroy the enemy. Also, I want to do more videos. Doing every 4 months a video is a bit too few. But, well, let's look where this journey will bring me.